everyone, Christina here with Burnley and Trowbridge and you are joining us today for another mini sew along. Today's sew along is how to make an 18th century wallet. Before we get to making our wallet, let's talk a little bit about the history of this object. And for that, I'm going to hand you all over to Angela. Hi everyone. So Christina asked me to tell you a little bit about the history of wallets. They have a very long history. Um, bags, as you can imagine, were a necessity throughout history. You see all varieties. Uh, definitely these bags, you can see similar ones early uh, as well as later past the 18th century. Uh, it was an accessory that many had and used. Uh, it was definitely something that was used uh, by both men and women. If you look at genre painting, you see a variety of wallets. They range in size from small to really large to a point of even like uh, a bag for ticking, you know, like a ticking bag for a mattress. You could put anything from your personal belongings into it all the way up to moving your household. So it was a very versatile type of accessory. Basically, the construction of this wallet was very simple. It had two closed ends and then it had a center opening. Well, 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 who's this? Obviously, he likes it here. So if you want to see how this was worn, it was really simple. This bag would come straight like so. You take it in the center, give it a twist or two, and then it could be slung over the shoulder. The weight on this end and the weight on this end would hold it in place. So you always wanted to pack it with even distribution both sides. All right, buddy, let's get you out of here. Otherwise he'll start feeling claustrophobic. So as I said, these could be made in all different sizes. It was something that was made of a very uh, utilitarian class, typically of linen. In fact, these classes of linen were made specifically for purposes such as bags. It could be things like barris or garlics, a very heavy Osnabrig or Osnaberg as you may know it, or it could be a canvas or a ticking. So with that bit of history, let's go to Christina who will take you through the process of making your own. Awesome, thank you, Angela. Now that we've learned a little bit more about the contextual history of this item, let's talk a little bit about construction before we get started. Because there aren't that many wallets that survive to study in collections today, particularly that can be dated to the 18th century, as scholars were left to use a little bit of conjecture and educated guesses to determine how something like this was put together. Now, that's not to say that there aren't any that survive. There certainly are. There are a couple of 19th century wallets. There are some mattress tickings that are constructed potentially in the same way as wallets as well. There's also the very high likelihood that wallets could be produced in a number of different methods, just like so many other 18th century garments. There's not necessarily one right way and there may not even be a wrong way. So the way that we're going to put the wallet together today is one possible way to construct a wallet, um, but it is not necessarily the only way to construct a wallet. We also wanna give a shout out to our friend Neil Hurst for directing us to a few surviving 19th century wallets. And we actually used one of those wallets to give us the dimensions of the wallet that we're going to be making today. So now that we've gotten all of that out of the way, let's go ahead and talk about supplies. For this project, we are going to need a few supplies. I have my supplies gathered here on the table in front of me. And as you can see, I have about three quarters yard of just medium weight natural linen. You could certainly make uh, a wallet out of something like a canvas as well. I chose medium weight today because we actually just happened to have a three quarter yard piece uh, downstairs and I didn't have to cut it off the bolt. So it was pretty convenient. 
If you would like, you can print out the cutting diagram. You can find this on our website. You don't need to. This is a square, well, it's a rectangle, as you can see. So it's pretty simple. But I know some of you have been asking for diagrams in some of our past sew alongs. So I wanted to make sure you had one if you needed it. I have my thimble because we're going to be doing some sewing. I also have some needles, thread, wax, which is very important, a couple of sizes of scissors, and yes, I do have a tape measure. Um, for this project, because we are just measuring a large square, it's not necessary to have a tape measure, but I know that a lot of you like to have specific numbers, so we went ahead and made sure you had those. Let's go ahead and get to cutting. For cutting, we're obviously going to need our fabric. You can print out your cutting diagram if it makes you feel a little more comfortable to have that there to reference. I've got some pins and my scissors, and I'm gonna go ahead and start by opening up my fabric. And remember I said I'm working with a three quarter yard piece of fabric. Because I'm working with three quarters yard, I'm actually not going to cut off any of the length of my fabric to cut it down to the 26 inches in our diagram. That wallet cutting diagram actually comes from a couple of 19th century examples that still survive in collections today. So certainly 26 is a good number. Theoretically, you could, if you wanted to, make your wallet out of fabric just like this. So the whole width of the fabric at that three quarters yard, fold it over and just have a very large wallet. I'm pretty short. So this would be a little difficult for me to get my arms into kind of all the way at the bottom of the ends of my wallet. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut this down uh, based on that cutting diagram to 40 inches uh, long. So I've got my 26, or in my case, 27 inches uh, going this way, folded over. I'm gonna go ahead and at this point you could measure if you want. I have already marked with a pin, however, where my 40 inch mark is. I'm gonna draw a thread. I'm gonna go ahead and just cut this. Okay, so now that we have cut out our rectangle, we're gonna to prepare to stitch this together. So first, let's go ahead and fold this in half, hot dog style. So you can see the shape of our wallet is uh, starting to appear. And with wallets, remember that the opening is in the middle. So what that means is we are going to actually seam up from the ends towards the center, but we're gonna leave part of that seam open so that becomes the slit that we'll put our hand in to get to the things that are inside the wallet. For this wallet, we are going to leave an opening of about 16 or 17 inches. So to do that, we're gonna go ahead and mark in from the ends, because I lost a bet with Brooke, I'm gonna use a tape measure today. I hope it was worth it. So I've marked my 11 inches there, and I'll do the same thing on the other end. And that's enough of this guy. Once I've marked where my slit will begin, what we need to do is hem the slit. So we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna fold back twice on the length that's going to be the opening of the wallet, and then we'll hem. So let's go ahead and do that, and then we'll come back. So you can see here that we have hemmed both sides of our slit opening to where we marked. And what I did at the end was I did just a really nice kind of ease of that fold into the raw edge. And the reason I did that is because we are now going to seam and fell the remaining portion of this edge. So what I actually wanna do is offset that edge just a little bit. And this way, once I seam this and go to turn it to fell it, I will actually be enclosing the 
fold. You can actually see that here. So you can see that because I hemmed this first and then turned part of that hem into the portion that I turned under for my felling, it actually encloses that very nicely. So when we're on the outside, everything is nice and neat. And on the interior, all of the raw edges are enclosed. So I'm gonna go ahead and seam this. And then when I get to the very end, I'll come back and I'll walk you through how to fold that over so that everything stays nice and neat tucked inside. So to seam, we're actually going to fell the seam. We're gonna backstitch along the edge and then we'll fold that over and fell it down, just like we've done in some of our other projects in our sew alongs. If you recall uh, the shift or even the unlined bed gown where we seamed, turned, and then hemmed it down. So let's go ahead and get started. I wanna show a close up of the portion where the hemmed slit will actually ease into the felled seam on the wallet. So you can see here, I have seamed, leaving the hemmed pieces just offset. And that's because now that we're getting ready to turn and fell our seam down, we want that hemmed portion to actually get turned under on the inside. You can see that right there. So that I actually don't have any raw edges on the interior of that section. And you can see what this looks like on the other side. So you can see my seam comes up, it gets turned over, and so from the exterior, we have a nice felled seam that transitions very smoothly into those hemmed slits. So at this point we have a tube with a little hole in the middle and we wanna have an enclosed bag with a slit. What we're gonna do is open that up, like you see here. And I like to put the opening in the center. The easiest way to find center for me without measuring is just to fold it into quarters, like you see here. And you can see that I am pretty much on dead center right there. So with that being said, I'm gonna go ahead and give that a little bit of a crease, kind of finger press it just to keep everything in line. On my edge with the salvage, I have simply backstitched along that. I'm leaving the salvage there. It's finished. It's not a clean salvage, but on the interior of this wallet, that's not gonna matter a whole lot for us. On the edge where we had raw cut fabric, what I've done is I've seamed it just like I did on the other side. And then I've gently opened it up. And you can see I've turned that over to prepare it to fell. Now, when you get to the corners, it can be a little fiddly to get that turn nice. That's kind of what you're gonna see there. But if you just spend a few moments with that, it's definitely worth it to get that nice and finished on your interior. So now that it's turned, we're gonna go ahead and hem or fell that down to finish off the interior of our wallet. Once we've finished felling that down, we'll go ahead and turn it right side out. Now you're ready to enjoy your wallet. Oh. Hey, Fran, you want inside? Okay, we're just gonna get settled here. 
Well, thank you for joining us for another mini sew along. We hope you enjoyed this video. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel for all of our future content and uh, to be notified of when we go live. Follow us on Instagram or Facebook for more day-to-day -day information. And until next time, happy sewing. Uh, let's go get some food. Maybe some nuggies. I like nuggies.